Um, my name is Diego Toral. I'm here with Juan Suarez and Mayra Canal. We work for Igalia, and we're going to talk about some of the uh, ongoing work we are doing on the uh, Raspberry Pi driver stack. So this is what we are going to cover. When I initially thought this uh, presentation, uh, it wasn't clear that the Raspberry Pi would be announced by the time of XDC, so it wasn't there, but it would be really weird having it announced just uh, uh, a few days ago to not come here to talk about the driver stack for Raspberry Pi and not talk about Raspberry Pi 5. So um, I'll have a brief mention to that. And then Juan is going to talk, uh, well, I'll keep talking a little bit about the uh, uh, CPU job handling on the Vulkan driver, which is a kind of a continuation from uh, the talk that we had uh, at the previous XCC. And then Juan is going to talk about uh, desktop OpenGL 3.1 support on the driver and the caveats with that. And uh, Maida is going to finish talking about uh, how we expose uh, GPU stats for user space. So Raspberry Pi 5, uh, it's uh, based on the same uh, architecture, uh, the video core architecture from Broadcom. It's just a, a new iteration of that. It comes with a higher clock rate, so it's, it's able to do a, a bit better on graphics. Um, it also comes with a few extra features, like we have uh, eight render target support. We have better support for subgroup operations. Um, uh, and maybe the, from the driver perspective, the major change was um, um, they made changes to register files and the uh, instruction encoding so they can do more instruction level parallelism. So uh, that allows us to basically produce smaller shaders that can run faster. Um, so the driver status is um, we, we just landed most of the work for the Mesa side of this um, just a few days ago. And there's still a few patches for some specific optimizations that require changes in here. Um, and those are on review. And then we have some patches on the kernel, which I need to send a V2 for those, uh, hopefully soon. Um, and then uh, the feature level that we're exposing here is the same as for Raspberry Pi 4 currently. So that's OpenGL ES 3.1 and Vulkan 1.2. Although, as I said, we do have some extra bonuses here. And then we also expose non-conformant version of OpenGL 3.1. This is also for Raspberry Pi 4. Um, and uh, well, Juan will talk about uh, about this a bit more later. Okay, so that's it for the Raspberry Pi 5 stuff. Now let's talk about um, some of the work that we have been doing outside Raspberry Pi 5. And one of these is, if you had been at XDC last year, one of the pain points that we had in the Vulkan driver was that um, this view that Vulkan has where everything executes on the GPU is not really how it happens for Raspberry Pi. So we need to have some level of CPU participation in some things. And the way we were handling this in the driver was really terrible uh, because it required, uh, it, it was basically all handling the CPU in the, in the user space side. Um, and this caused some problems. Particularly, we couldn't implement things like uh, sync of the exports and things like that for, because of that. So we, the way we were, we have been handling this is twofold. On the one hand, there are some things that we push to GPU through compute shaders. And this is the case for, for event handling now for us. Uh, and then for things that really require to use the, uh, the CPU, like for example, timestamp queries, um, uh, Maida has been working on implementing a new type of uh, queue on the kernel, which is a CPU queue, uh, and, and basically just executes uh, tasks and jobs on, on the CPU. But it does that from within the kernel, which means from the user space driver point of view, it is just another queue, and there's no difference. We can still use sync objects, and like we can coordinate all our work like we do for everything else. And this allows us to expose uh, SyncFD now. And now Juan is going to talk about uh, OpenGL 3.1. Yeah, so uh, OpenGL 3.1 for Raspberry Pi 4. Our first thing is that uh, we expose OpenGL 3.1 but we are not uh, conformant. And uh, probably it won't be conformant, at least for the Raspberry, Raspberry Pi 4. And the reason is because, well, uh, this requires some uh, features in the hardware that uh, we don't, so, so don't have. Um, but still, we have uh, quite a large number that allows us to implement all the requir required extensions and things uh, to, to expose OpenGL 3.1. And the way this is important, um, it's important to, to expose OpenGL 3.1 instead of keeping the 2.2. Uh, 
And main reason is that the Raspberry Pi devices intended to be used as desktop uh, host uh, computer. And uh, so most uh, desktop apps are tied for the OpenGL uh, desktop instead of OpenGL ES. And the thing is that uh, we were already uh, implementing a lot of the features required for the OpenGL 3.1. So only a couple of them were missed, missed and uh, well, it was a matter of time to implement them. Uh, so that makes Mesa to expose OpenGL 3.1 for uh, Raspberry Pi 4. Uh, and well, you know, the, when you expose a new um, version, that appears new test, new failures. And we were working on the um, on fixing the the all the uh, CTS uh, fails and also MPL. Um, so for CTS, we managed to fix all of them. Uh, for MPL, almost. Uh, except some that I will talk later, uh, and but still there are quite a lot of uh, tests to fix because you know um, there was like a lot of tests that were skipped because they require OpenGL 3.1, especially tests for some extensions, and now they are uncovered and uh, well some pass, some fail, so we need to uh, analyze them. So for the failing tests, uh, we identify like they if we were failing due uh, three kind of features we don't support in the in the Raspberry Pi 4. One is, of course, the eight render tights, uh, or however I support four. But I think it's the same for other drivers, like Fridreno, probably Panfrost, they only support um, four. Uh, the funny part is that Misa is lying here, like white lying, uh, in the sense that uh, they know that four is enough. So they just, OK, say so it's four is support then we expose OpenGL 3.1. Uh, the good part is probably this uh, will be fixed, I mean, it's probably nice, it's fixed in Raspberry Pi, Raspberry Pi 5. Uh, they support eight running targets. The other thing that was uh, missed was uh, support for the 16 bits of formats for texturing. Uh, we support uh, this format for other things, um, uh, but not for texturing. Uh, fortunately, this is kind of easy to fix because uh, I miss there is like this a fallback mechanism. So if you just say that you want to support this format for anything, we will fall back to other formats that are supported. And with this, basically, uh, we managed to fix the, all the problems. And the last one is a bit, a bit annoying, but uh, is that uh, in OpenGL, uh, the filtering, uh, the texture could map filtering is non seamless and the OpenGL ES is seamless. And our hardware is intended to be used by uh, no, uh, OpenGL ES. So basically, it does the seamless uh, filtering by default, and you can't uh, enable it non seamless. So we are not sure if this can be fixed in the Raspberry Pi, uh, but we were thinking about doing some, maybe trying some kind of lowering to convert QB maps to array of textures. Uh, I'm not sure if Sync is doing something similar. I guess so. So it's something that we need to explore to solve this, to this problem. So that, that's the situation. So now, Maida. OK, so the last most like important feature that uh, we introduced to the Raspberry Pi driver stack recently was GPU stats. Uh, we exposed them uh, globally and per file descriptor. Uh, and due to some hardware limitations that we have on the Raspberry Pi, we ended up using uh, a CPU resource to calculate the um, cal uh, accumulated amount of active time because we don't have uh, a way to do this in the GPU. So we ended up using local clock to calculate um, the accumulated amount of active time. In order to expose the GPU stats per file descriptor, we used the standard DRM client used stats. So it's something that we have in the DRM already and it's pretty standard and you can uh, integrate it with GPU top in IGT, for example. And for the global GPU stats, we don't have something standard yet. So we use it CSFS to expose the global GPU stats. Here you can see um, GPU top running on the uh, Raspberry Pi 4. So as you can see, you can see all the queues uh, on all the five queues that we have on the Raspberry Pi 4. And you can also see we using the global GPU stats in the UI. We implemented like on the task manager, which is right on top there. And you can see that 
uh, we exposed the global GPU stats. Yeah, so that's it for this presentation. And now if we have some time for, for questions, if you have any. You mentioned in your talk that there are some missing hardware features that prevent you from supporting GLES 3.1. And I'm just curious, uh, does that have any implications for uh, Vulkan support? So it's not GLES, it's desktop GL. Um, and for Vulkan support, um, what do you mean? I mean, like invoking. Let's so the missing hardware features, do they prevent you from supporting uh, Vulkan? No, 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 no. Uh, Vulkan, we support up to 1.2 at the moment. I don't know if we can do 1.3. Uh, we'll, I guess we'll get into that uh, for now on. Uh, but on, that's, that was only strictly affecting OpenGL. And my second v question... Vulkan is, is, a little, is actually a bit nicer in that regard because there's a lot of optional stuff and uh, GL is more strict with these things. There's a lot of things packed into a a core version, and if you don't have one format that you don't support, then you are screwed. So my second question is, do you have any plans for supporting Vulkan video? Uh, not at the moment. Thank you. Hi. Uh, as I understood, uh, both global and per application, per 3D uh, application stats are supported now uh, can you can you tell me more about how these stats are collected um. so we basically collect the timestamp when we queue a job uh, into when we start to execute a job on the gpu and when the job finishes we have an interruption and then we collect the timestamp again and then we made the subtraction Thank you. No more questions? I think we're done. Thank you.